Yesterday, in the Democratic response to the State of the Union, uh, Congressman Kennedy said something that I thought was very on point, uh, which is it's, it was almost like hearing the president talk about, uh, about living in America as a zero-sum game. And that is such a dynamic that has been alive and well uh, that fostered the Trump um, campaign and, and its current presidency. And it's this idea that there's just not enough to go around and that you have to take chairs away from the table instead of adding chairs to the table. Mm -hmm. And that's such mm -hmm. a different concept of America. You know, I'm an immigrant. I came here when I was little and I was raised by a single mother and uh, I grew up on minimum wage in, in a housing project. Mm -hmm. And like, and as, as an American, you know, who's lived here for most of my life since I was a little kid, that is a conception of America that is so alien to me because it's something that I was never taught, right? I was taught that America is the land of opportunity, right? And to believe in the American dream and that if you work hard enough, you could get to Penn, even though you're the first person in your family to go to college. And that if you work hard enough, you could go to law school and become a lawyer, even though you're the first person in your family to graduate from college and to ever you know, be a lawyer. And so to me, that conception of America that's one of limited opportunities and that we have to duke it out on the streets of Charlottesville and on airports to deny people access and that we're going to go round up immigrants to deport them because that's the only way that you're going to have enough food on your table or a roof over your head is so deeply damaging to the heart and soul of our country and contrary to everything that I've been taught since I was here as a little kid. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what's most at stake is what is the vision for America? Mm -hmm. Is it a vision where we provide opportunities only to people who look a certain way or who come from certain zip codes or who have certain networks? Or is it an America that is broadly and radically inclusive and that will provide food and shelter for everyone? And I would like to believe that the America that my mom signed up for when she brought me here as a little kid and that I signed up for is the America that we all live in. And, and it's really crazy to me that, that it's not. And so the images of things like Charlottesville, the, the, my office out of Boston responded to an incident of an eight-year-old black kid who was nearly lynched in Claremont, New Hampshire, in the heart of New England, a little kid being attacked by his white peers. Like that's like you were saying, Mark, and like like Amber has been talking about, almost like ripped out of a page of a history book, and it happened just a few months ago. And so when we're talking about what's at stake and what are the greatest challenges that we have as a country, that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with with this racialized violence. We're dealing with this tremendous strand of xenophobia that made the US president and the Republican Party go on live TV yesterday and say that family reunification is the biggest threat to our country. Because that family reunification is the reunification of black and brown families, of other minorities and of immigrants. And that is deeply damaging. And so those are, I think, some of the ideas that, that come to my mind when I hear Mark and Amber talk, because I completely agree, it is about uh, what is the concept of America, what type of democracy we live in, and how economic opportunities are distributed. And so all of this is at stake. And, uh, and I think we also need to be very careful about these conversations because, you know, I noticed a report that was issued by the Center for American Progress that talked about kind of like, you know, explaining the Trump phenomenon and attributing it mostly to the economic, up, up, economic challenges that are being experienced in blue collar communities. And I reacted to that viscerally because it is disingenuous for us to blame this just on the economy and on the fact that, and I agree, that it's tough out there and that your chuck doesn't go a long way. Racism is intertwined with the phenomenon that we're living. And if we cannot, as, as organizations, as advocates, as leaders, 
uh, ad admit that and talk about that, as uncomfortable as it might feel, then we're not doing our jobs and our communities justice. Thank you.